So, heat distortion is used many times in games to convey the feeling of something so hot that it distorts the hair around it. And I've been asked many times to create a tutorial about it. So, that's exactly what we are going to see today. First, we will see how to do it in the high definition render pipeline, and then we will see in the universal render pipeline. Just want to say that these tutorials are possible thanks to my patrons. And by becoming a patron, you get awesome rewards, such as access to a tremendous amount of visual effects that you can use in your games. So, with that being said, let's jump right into it. As you can see, I'm using Unity 2020.2 and in a new empty project with the HDRP template selected. And the first thing we need is to make sure that in the package manager, we go up here in Unity Registry and check if Visual Effect Graph is installed, as well as Shader Graph. Then it's very important that you go to the Preference in the Edit and in Visual Effects turn on Experimental Operator slash Blocks to get access to the hidden features of Visual Effect Graph. That's right. And guess what? In HDRP we only need the Visual Effect Graph to create the heat distortion effect. That's how awesome it is. So, with right click, let's create a visual effect graph in a folder inside our project, rename it to something like Heat Distortion, and then let's go ahead and drag and drop it to the scene. Let me just place it around here. To open this up, we simply need to press this edit button and we get this window. Then I'm gonna dock around here and make some room. Ok, so everything happens down here, in the output. We don't want the output particle quad, we want to drag a new line from here and as you can see we have this output particle distortion quad and distortion mesh. For this tutorial let's use the quad one, delete this output block and let's just increase the size of these particles so we can see something. With the set size block, one is enough. Ok, so yeah, nothing much is happening right now. And there are two distortion modes. One is in screen space and the other in normal based mode. Let's start with the screen space. The first thing we want to do is select a map, a blur map. And we got this default particle that comes in all of Unity projects that we can use. And as soon as we do it, as you can see, we get some distortion. We can decrease the blur scale and we have a nice distortion going on, it's not that bad, it looks pretty good, out of the box. But if you want, you can use a flip book as well. Like for example, this dust texture that comes with Unity, where we can say that the UV mode is flip book blend, and the size is 2x2, two two. and then we only need an index over life to animate this. Erase this key, Click down here in this graph, and now for the last key, we want it to be 3 in the value because it's a 2x2 two two texture, so it's 4 frames, but this starts counting at 0. And we are starting to see something interesting. Now, what else we can do? Well, we can make sure that this fades out with a set color over life. Now, as you can see, instead of disappearing, it fades out. Cool. And if you want, you can also come up here and add a set angle, channel set to only Z. And the first thing we need, make it random in inspector, uniform, between 360 and minus 360. And we got a nice thing going on. If you want, you can make it rotate over time with a multiplier angle, one in the Z. The only thing we need is to decrease the blur scale to something like 0 0.16 and we got a nice distortion going on. One thing that is worth mentioning is this scale by distance. It will adapt to the camera distance in relation to this VFX graph. As you can see, if we turn it off and get away from the heat distortion effect, it still has the same power. If you turn it on, it will adapt depending on the position of the camera. 
Another thing worth mentioning is the distortion scale. If you increase it, you also increase the distortion influence. That's pretty cool for the screen space distortion mode, right? Now let's drag this to the left, copy with Ctrl C and paste it with Ctrl V. Connect the update particle, disconnect the other one. Because now, for the normal based distortion mode, we don't want to use a flip book, we can make it default. And we want to remove this normal map as well, we don't need this one. What we can actually do now is go to Google, just to demonstrate how this works, and quickly Google something like normal map circle. I'm gonna choose this one, I'm gonna save it to the project, and then I'm gonna assign it to the smoothness map. It may seem like nothing happened, but if you increase the distortion scale, you get a sweet distortion going on. Right? The only problem is that you got these art edges. The way we solve it is super simple. We got this alpha mask, and if we click it, we can assign the default particle that comes with Unity. And it will become super smooth, this heat distortion. Either way, both of these distortions are looking very neat and super simple to set up in HDRP. As you can see, you only need Visual Effects Graph. Now let's see how we can do it in the Universal Render Pipeline. As you can see, I have a new project here, empty, with the Universal Render Pipeline template selected, in the same version of Unity 2020.2. And in this new project, once again, let's make sure that in Package Manager we have Visual Effect installed, which I don't have out of the box, and Shader Graph installed as well. And the difference in the Universal Render Pipeline is that we don't have an Output Particle Distortion Quad in VFX Graph. So what we are going to do is start with a shader, a blank shader graph, to create the distortion. Let's rename it. You can open up with double click. And let me make some room. Okay, so we got this Graph Inspector up here. If you don't see it, you can click on this button. And the active targets for now, let's make it universal. We want this material to be unlit, the surface to be transparent, and we want this to be two sided so we can see it from the front and from the back as well. And it all comes down to one node the scene color node, which gives us access to whatever the camera is seeing, to put it simply. If you connect this to the base color, Save this asset, create a material out of the shader, and then create a quad, and assign the material. Let me just place this quad somewhere nice. Drag and drop the heat distortion material, and as you can see, we get this gray panel. That means that we need to turn on the depth and the opaque textures. The way you can do it is going to Edit, Project Settings, go to Graphics, so you can locate your Universal Render Pipeline asset. Mine is in the Settings folder. I'm going to select it and in General, I'm going to turn on Depth Texture and Opaque Texture. And as you can see, this becomes transparent. Because this is feeding what the camera sees, but with the screen position coordinates. Now it all comes down to distorting this scene color. For example, this scene color node, if you connect the screen position, if we save it, nothing changes because it's exactly the same thing. By default, it's the screen position being fitted to the scene color. By the way, you can turn off shadows on this quad, probes and dynamic occlusion as well. So now what we are going to do is use a lerp node. Lerp node is very simple. We got this T input that will blend between A and B, in this case between black and white. As you can see, once we get closer to 1, it gets whiter, and once we get closer to 0, it gets darker. So what we are going to fit to the A option is no distortion at all. And to the B, we are going to fit it totally distorted. For the T, we are going to create a float called Heat Distortion. That we can select, and now in the Graph Inspector, in the Node Settings, we can say it's a slider between 0 and 1. Great, let's connect it to the T input. Now, for the B option, it's very simple. All we gotta do is add 
noise to this screen position. A simple noise node will do, with around 50 for the scale. If you connect to the B option, save this. Now let me make some room so I can show you both things at the same time. If we increase the heat distortion of the quad material, as you can see we get a really nice distortion going on. Crazy distortion. Right? Pretty cool. The only thing we are missing is some motion. And every time we need motion, we need a time node. At least in a shader workspace. Let's create a vector too for the distortion speed. Multiply it with the time node and create a tiling and offset node. The offset option is the one we want. Connect this to the simple noise. Save it and now, in this vector, if you increase the Y option of the distortion speed to minus 0.2, we get a scrolling distortion effect going on. Right, we just need to fix these art edges. So let's create a mask, a texture 2D. Let's drag it down here, sample it. And for the default text, we are going to once again use the default particle that comes with Unity, which is always super useful. Let's multiply the mask with a simple noise and replace the connection to the add. And that's it. We can save it. And in Inspector now, we only need to assign the default particle texture to the heat distortion material. Once we do it, we get this amazing distortion going on. There's only one downside. This technique does not distort transparent materials. It also works well with a particle system, as you can see. I'm gonna delete this particle system and show you how to make it work with a VFX graph. So I'm going to create a VFX graph. Drag it to the scene. Let me frame it. And I'm going to press edit to open up the effect graph once again. And if we go to this output particle quad, to this shader graph option, we have nothing in here. And that's correct because the shader we created, the target, it's only for a universal render pipeline. We need to say that the target is also visual effect in the graph inspector. And nothing really changes at least at first glance. What we can do now is go back to the VFX graph. And now in the shader graph, we have the heat distortion shader we created. And if we assign it, it's almost perfect. We just need to increase a little bit this vector one with a very strange name because the reference is not properly named and then assign the mask, which is the default particle. And chara, we get a very nice distortion going on with visual effects graph in the universal render pipeline. There's just a slight problem. As you can see, if you look closely, you can notice the squares. We just need to go back to the shader and drag from the mask texture, from the alpha, drag a connection to the alpha input of our shader, just like this. Save it. And now we get a really nice distortion going on. And from now on, you can do a couple things. For example, if you want to name properly these vectors and this texture, all you gotta do is select the property. And in the graph inspector, in the node settings, you can copy the name to the reference and add an underscore, for example. Once you save it, if you go back to VFX graph now, you have some proper names in your properties of the shader. Cool. To animate the heat distortion amount, for example, now you could use an attribute from the particle, the age attribute from the particle, connect it to a sample curve, and now the curve will animate the heat distortion amount, where the maximum is 0.05, for example, and connect to the heat distortion. And now in the beginning and in the end of the lifetime of the particle, it will fade in and then fade out. Actually, this set color of a life isn't doing anything, you can remove it. And then you can do stuff like we did in the HDRP. You can use a set size to create a more uniform distortion. And then you can come up here to the initialized particle and use a set angle with a channel set to Z, just like we did before, random, between 360 and minus 360. 
So each particle has a different rotation. And if you want to add a little bit of rotation to all of the particles, you can use a multiply angle, multiply it in the Z something like 1. And many more things that you can do. If you want to find out more about Visual Effect Graph, check out my channel. There's plenty of tutorials there. I'm sure you will learn a lot. And if you want to see more of this content, please subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you really want to show your appreciation for my work, you can always go to my Patreon page and support me there. To all my patrons, a big thank you goes to you, to each one of you. And as usual, here's a quick shout out for the top tier patrons, which are Alak Frost, Bradford Arendt, Cash Kids, CK VFX, Curtis Henry, David Crew, Goblin Plague, Imarais PC, Hostile Mars Game, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Mariano Di Giulio Jr., Matt Hook, Mikhail, Novo RKV, Oitsk, Sverring Tree, and Tirita. A big thank you goes to all of you. Your support is very much appreciated. To everyone who watched this video, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.